Hello, this is Eric. Today is May the 15th, 2023. And in this video, we are going to address the topic of confession, right? Uh, we have been uh, covering the experience of salvation. Uh, we have already uh, talked about previous sanctification, uh, enlightenment, calling, repentance, salvific faith, and now confession, okay? This is the Ordo Salutis. Ordo Salutis stands for Order of Salvation. Obviously, guys, as I told you in previous videos, uh, salvation cannot, be, cannot become a doctrine. We just uh, separated uh, into uh, structures, into topics like that, so that, it, so that it becomes easier for us to understand it, right? Uh, but don't think that, uh, you know, all of these things are exactly, you know, they take place exactly in the sequence. No, this is not the case. Well, confession. I believe this is going to be um, a really quick topic but it is an important one, and I'm, and I'm going to show you why. Uh, confession is a word, right? Uh, the root of which translates the idea of recognition, declaration, testimony, revelation, and profession as a result of the inner conviction of the confessor and not of a mere outward manifestation devoid of truth. You know, this is very important to be pointed out here. If you come uh, from a gospel denomination, I mean, I mean from an evangelical or Protestant uh, denom denomination, you are probably familiar with uh, that moment after the sermon when uh, the pastor or the bishop or whatever you know, whatever name they give to your leader, you know, when when this person invites uh, all their uh, other members of the congregation, maybe who are visiting the church uh, in that occasion. Th th so these people are invited to go forward and accept Jesus as their Savior. Now, is this really an, uh, a, an accurate expression of, uh, of the desire of God's heart? This is something that we must wonder here. Right, because uh, this thing is done based on uh, a supposed and alleged confession that is made there uh, that will produce, that will bring about salvation to this person or to these persons that accept such invitation. And as we're going to see, uh, you know, confession is accompanied. Uh, with an understanding, an understanding of the gospel that brings uh, a, a, an inner disposition of the confessor's heart for the sake of the truth that they now understand, which includes knowledge about man, about God, the church, sins, and the gospel. So what I'm trying to tell you is that uh, most of the times when these people are invited, you know, uh, they will feel um, they will feel urged, they will feel encouraged uh, because of this uh, this atmosphere, this environment of worship, and maybe even you know they recognize that they need God, but they didn't really understand uh, God's will sin. So these are things that must be understood so that a proper confession is made. And I, I'm going to be talking about this, right, as you, uh, as you read my text. You know, I am adjusting some things here because uh, it's really, you know, <laughs> I, I don't really have too much time, you know, to write all these, all these texts, but I do my best. So, uh, confession starts with recognition, right? Um, it occurs when the light of the gospel illuminates man's conscience, breaking the spell of the illusion of the fall, and leading him or her to the recognition 
of their abandonment, 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 sorry, of God, right? Of their arrogance. And above all, of their need to return to God, right? So all of this is a process. It doesn't happen uh, in a blink of an eye. It doesn't happen in a single night, uh, no matter how much, how many things, you know, the preacher have uh, addressed, you know, in, in his or her sermon. But all of these things, you know, they must, uh, they must be recognized and understood and comprehended. And uh, although profess uh, pro professing, uh, I mean, loudly does have... Uh, I mean, its importance. Uh, not necessarily this, uh, this confession, this outward confession, translate, uh, you know, the understanding concerning God's purpose inside of this person. And it not necessarily translates a it not necessarily translates a sincere desire in the heart of this person. There are people that are, you know, they, they simply go uh, and accept this invitation, you know, to accept Jesus as their Savior because they are afraid of dying and going to hell. So, really, guys, confession is the outcome of a process that starts... Uh, by recognizing the, 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 that means, you know, this person is going to recognize uh, his or her need for God, you know, uh, their arrogance, you know, uh, their abandonment of God, you know, the fact that they abandoned, they forsook God, you know, um, and also, um, you know there is going to be a statement, but it doesn't it doesn't necessarily happen loudly so that everybody may hear that. You know it is important that we abandon you know these outward uh, religious life. You know things happen inside of us in our conscience in our heart. So yeah, this person after recognizing their need for God, you know, yeah, they, they may manifest that in, uh, in an outward statement. But what really is important, what really matters, is what is going on inside. And this is something that only God can fathom and really uh, see clearly. You know, after all, as we read in the, in the, in the epistle of the Hebrews, uh, the Word of God, that is God Himself, is able to penetrate us and to search and clearly see everything that we are. Everything. Soul, spirit, mind, intentions, feelings. God sees everything. So this is, you know, confession starts here. It can be manifested outwardly but it is something that is uh, important and it must be um, mandatorily uh, that it, it must be it must mandatorily take place inside of us right it is also a testimony oh yeah if this person has to confess this understanding, you know, this, uh, this work of salvation that is started inside of them that transformed their mind. Yes, this person is going to witness that publicly so that everybody may hear. Just like it took place uh, in, in, the, in the primitive church time or, or even in the beginning, the onset of the church, right? Uh, they were uh, persecuted for the sake of the gospel. And in many, in, in many stances, you know, in many situations, they had to, you know, they, they, were, uh, they were confronted. And, and people, uh, you know, uh, the authorities, they asked them, are you a Christian? Are you a Jesus follower? 
and they would undoubtedly state, yes, I am. The Lord Jesus changed my life and now I belong to him, right? So uh, this testimony is really uh, a natural result of a work that was implemented inside uh, this new believer, right? So um, baptism is also um, a way of confessing the name of Jesus Christ, right? Uh, but we got to be careful here, guys. You know, we are going to be talking in more detail about this. But don't forget that the, bap I mean, baptism in its essence is an outward symbol of the true and only baptism, right? I mean, baptism essentially consists in the mystical union of the believer in the person of Christ uh, with Jesus in his death and resurrection, as we read in Romans 6, verses 3 to 5. So uh, the outward symbol of baptism, yes, it is preached by the apostles, yet yeah, Jesus uh, mentioned it, but we must understand that this uh, outward baptism, you know, you uh, either plunging someone in the water or even just, uh, I mean, just sprinkling water into this person's face, you know, this only, this is just a pedagogical tool that uh, represents the essence of what baptism is uh, that, you know, which we have just explained here, right? The mystical union of the believer uh, with Christ and his death and resurrection, right? So, uh, it has the, the, the thing, I mean, the, um, the rite, the ritual has no organic value. It is just uh, really... Uh, a manifestation, a pedagogical manifestation that a believer uh, must comply with in obedience to God, but knowing, understanding its spiritual uh, reality, its spiritual meaning, and knowing that it's simply, I, I mean, the act, the ritual is just a pedagogical, a transitory, a provisional uh, ritual, okay? This is something we must understand. Uh, that, that we must understand, sorry. So, now, we have confession of sins. It is very important that we understand. I mean, when Jesus died in the cross, uh, as I have already stated here, you know, he was paying the debt that was charged not by God, absolutely, but by the devil. As we read in Colossians, um, I believe chapter 1 or chapter 2, um, there was a debt that was being charged by the devil regarding us, humanity. He accused us to God before God, saying that we should mandatorily uh, reap the sins that we sowed. And then God, you know, before the situation what does he do? Well, in Jesus Christ, in, in Jesus Christ, sorry, God, in Jesus Christ, pays this debt by pouring on him all the, the consequences, all the wages of all sins by humanity over himself, right? So, we have, we Actually, guys, this is important that we understand. God, as we read in, in 1 Corinthians, God never, ever accused any man, any being regarding any sin. God is love. Love, as we read in Corinthians 13, is not about collecting sins and offenses and charging them later on. No. God is about love. God is not offended by the wrong things that you and me do. However, this debt was being charged by the devil, impersonated in, in the Epistle of Rome's by uh, death. So the salary, the wage of sin is death. 
So this is the wage that the devil uh, charged. The devil accused us and required that we paid for this debt with our lives. But God is merciful and so he poured this death, you know, as the consequences of the entire humanity's sins. He poured it all sins on himself and paid this debt, right? This is what we read in the book of Colossians. But now that we as believers, as members of the body of Christ, know that we are free, uh, judicially saying, legally saying, uh, regarding our sins, we must confess the sins. We have this organic salvation that is being operated inside of us. And so the confession of sins, which is the recognition and the profession of things that we did that offended God and our neighbor, we have to confess these things. You know, uh, this is something that we got to do, not because God uh, needs, you know, to see us uh, hum being humiliated. No, but because that kind of thing will, little by little, bit by bit, save us organically. Every time that we confess our sins. And this is something that we must understand. You know, you don't read the Bible by taking isolated verses. No, you read the Bible in its entirety. So when the Apostle John tells us that God is not going to forgive us if we do not forgive our neighbors, it is not about the legal issue here of the sins. As I said, Jesus has already paid for all of our sins. But what, what happens when we do not forgive our neighbors for their trespasses is that this kind of thing um, declares loudly that we have a problem in our hearts. That we have a problem in our heart, in our soul. Because we did not understand the love of God. We were not conquered, gained entirely by the love of God. So this is something that will be, we will have to be treated by God. This is what the Apostle John says there in his epistle. So the confession of sins demonstrates and attests us that in our hearts we understood the issue of sin and our total and complete dependence on God, on the mercy of God to overcome our sins and become what we must be in Jesus Christ. Right? And obviously, we have the confession of faith. Right? Uh, you know, also here, although you do have certain situations in your life when you have to loudly confess the truths of the gospel, right? Although you do have these situations, uh, it is pretty much more about confessing innerly. It is, it is as if your conscience, your soul, is now totally gained by the, by the, the values of the gospel. This is what confessing faith is all about. It is manifested outwardly in some cases, oh yeah, but it happens inside of us. When we understand the pillars of the faith, when, when we understand all the pillars of our faith, we, and, uh, and, and we agree with God, our heart is going to comply with these truths, with these values, and this will automatically and consequently be manifested outwardly. Okay? Well, so I have, I, I really hope you have understood all these details about confession, and we will keep talking about the order of salvation in our next video. Thank you so much. God bless you, and see you in our next video.